Hello everyone, welcome back to our third educational video and this is your teacher, Sir Arnold. I am Educado. Again, thank you so much for liking and subscribing to our YouTube channel and for this time, we're going to discuss another important topic in Philippine politics and governance. Last time we discussed about politics, we also discussed regarding the different kinds of ideologies. Ngayon naman, pag-usapan naman natin yung isang paraan para mapasunod ang mga mamamayan nang hindi gumagamit ng dahas, maaaring gumamit din ng dahas, at maaaring pakinggan ang kanilang mga hinihing. And this is what we call the new topic is all about the concept of power. Now, when it comes to our mind, power is just a simple word. Pero, power is powerful. Now, let us define what is power. Power is one of the important concepts and plays a huge role in politics. Malaki ang kanyang role, malaki ang gampan nito. Especially from governing how decisions are made to how to how political actors interact with one another. Dito pumapasok yung distribution of the resources at doon papasok yung distribution of power. Kasi kasama rin po sa power yung authority. Now, let us go deeper regarding the concept of power. According to Lord Acton, power tends to be corrupted. And absolute power corrupts absolutely. Medyo negative ang pagbibigay niya ng meaning because the power leads to corruption according to Lord Acton. According to William Gaddis, power doesn't corrupt people. People corrupt power. Ayun, medyo nilinaw naman ni William Gaddis na hindi power ang nagkoparap ng tao. But the tao ang nagkoparap ng power. Hmm, sounds negative again. Next, according to Eric Hopfer, the, the only way to predict the future is to have the power to shape the future. This is a positive connotation from Eric because according to him, the main weapon to predict the future is to have a good power to have a good future next all right now let us go deeper again to the meaning of power politics always involves the exercise of power because again in politics kailangan ng governance at kapag may governance it's a set of all different political actions Papasok doon ang pag-exercise ng power. The exercise of power by one person or persons to another person or to the set of persons. Power is the ability to get someone to do something he or she wants to accomplish. Ito ay isang kakayanan ng tao na mapasunod ang isa pang tao para magawa ang gusto niya or nais niya. And thus, making things happen in the way he or she wants it. Sa kung anong paraan niya ito mapapasunod. Halimbawa, ako yung leader. Gusto kong malaman kung sino ang aking magiging vice, vice president. I can ask my people na magkaroon ng botohan or election para malaman kung sino ang magiging vice president. Sino na sunod? Ako as the leader. Anong paraan ang ginamit yung paraan ko? And that's how power is executed to the people. Isang paraan yun. And in order to influence person, there must an authority. Again, authority. Power, authority. Laging magkasama yan. The authority is the right to change another person. Power is as well a prime ingredient of politics. Kung sa pagkain, power talaga yung pinaka-main ingredient 
kasi doon umaandar lahat ng political actions and in that way malaking tulong to para magkaroon talaga ng magandang shape yung future ng society power is as well as a prime ingredient of politics however there are some instances nga raw na yung power ay nagiging cynical or brutal or self-destructive kasi minsan po may mga leaders na na-abuse ang power power tends to be corrupted absolute power corrupts absolutely balikan natin si Lord Acton kanina yun yung kanyang unang connotation regarding power and we have different sources of power so ano ano ba mga sources ng power first the organizational power actually this kind of power derived from one person's position in an organization from a control over valuable resources afforded by that position sa ganitong paraan nangyayari ito sa companies sa isang organization Example, sa DepEd, yung pinaka-leader nila sa loob ng school is the principal, followed by the head teacher, then the set of faculty or the teachers. So, sino yung nasa taas ng organization? It's the principal. Pero above principal, pag lumabas tayo sa school, meron tayong division superintendent. So, sino under naman ni division superintendent? yung lahat ng principals and lahat ng orders ay nanggagaling sa kanila again, the higher the position or the highest the position sila ang, nagkada- ang kadalasan nagiging leader sa organizational power sino nakakapag-exercise ng power? yung nasa mataas na position and in this kind of organizational power we have different kinds of powers first is the reward power Sa reward power, it's the extent to which a leader can use extrinsic and intrinsic rewards to control and influence other people. In reward power, ito yung reward system. Kapag magandang performance mo, you'll be rewarded because of your performance. Example, oh, magaling ka, so you deserve a promotion. Or sa classroom, magaling ka as a class officer. So therefore, pag isa kang class officer at magaling kang vice president or president or secretary, you will be awarded additional merits, di ba? additional points. Isa yun. That's extrinsic. Sa intrinsic naman, possible naman mabus pa yung confidence mo as a person to perform your duty well. Next, coercive power. Sa coercive power naman, it's the degree to which a leader can deny desired rewards or administer punishments to control other people and let them follow his or her wants. Dito medyo kamay na bakal ang sinasabi natin sa coercive power kasi ang aking mga salita ay batas. Ang lumabag sa batas ay paparusahan. That's it. Gano siya kasimple. Uh, one good, one example of this coercive power is Adolf Hitler sa panahon niya na ng pagpapasunod sa mga Nazi na kung saan kapag hindi siya sinusunod ay pinapapatay niya talaga yung tao next is the legitimate power it's the extent to which a leader can use subordinates internalized values or beliefs that the boss has a right of command to control his subordinates behavior it is otherwise known as formal hierarchical authority. Sa legitimate power naman, dito yung leader, ginagamit niya yung mga nasa ibaba niya ng mga tao para mapasunod niya ito. For example, boss, followers. Yun yung simple explanation dito. Kung sino nasa taas sa posisyon, siya yung masusunod. Unlike yung reward power, sa reward power kasi, balikan natin yung reward power kanina, ayan po, Si reward power, siya ay Si reward power kasi, may reward na makukuha. Unlike in legitimate power, wala po. Another set of kind of power is the information power. 
in this kind of power, the leader has the access and control of the information. This could be granted to specialists and managers in the middle of the information system. The people may protect information in order to increase their power. Actually, nangyayari yan yung sa government na natin na kapag may mga information na hindi dapat ilabas or ilik sa, ma sa madlang people na it can cause alarm sa mga tao, hindi yan basta-basta nilalabas. Example, yung nabal kung nabalitaan ninyo yung kay de ah, kay Department of Health Secret Secretary na kung saan nagkaroon na pala ng second wave ng COVID-19 sa Pilipinas but hindi siya ni-reveal agad. So that's an example of information power. The leader has the control para hindi magpanik yung mga tao. Para hindi, si hindi ma-alarm ng sobra-sobra ang mga tao. Actually, it, the main purpose is to protect the information. May mga tinatawag kasi tayong um, classified. Yan. Next is process power. The leader has full control over the methods of production and analysis. Thereby, placing an indi individual in the position of influencing how inputs are transformed into outputs as well as managing the analytical process used to make choices. Dito naman sa process power, ginagamit ng leader yung position niya para makontrol kung anong klaseng output yung lalabas, ano ang mga gagamitin materyales. Example, sa isang, sa isang company may pagawaan ng furniture. Siya magsasabi kung anong gagamitin materials. Then, anong klaseng output? Siya lang ang lahat ang magdideside nun. Parang sa government natin, anong klaseng pamamalakan at then sa kanyang paraan. Kung anong resulta nito sa mga tao. Next kind of power is the representative power. The legal right conferred to speak by the firm as a representative of a potentially significant group composed of individuals from departments or outside the firm or the group. Isang example po nito is yung sa Pilipinas. Marami tayong representatives. May representative para sa ganitong grupo. May representative para sa ganito. They are referred as the party list groups or the social movement acts. Uh, halimbawa, kap, um, kilusang mayo uno. May mga representative yan para mapakinggan ng hinaing ng mga manggagawang Pilipino. Meron din tayong Teachers Dignity Act. Sila naman yung grupo na nagre-represent sa lahat ng mga kaguruan sa buong Pilipinas para mailabas yung kanilang mga hinaing, request, o kung ano paman. Yun nga lang, there's a weak side in representative, representative power. Sometimes, the representatives, they don't ask the group or hindi sila nag ng consensus para ma-perform nila yung sarili nilang interest. May mga ganong leaders. Again, there's a good leader. There's, there, there is also an, an abusive leader. Number two kind of power. First is the organizational. This one is the individual power or personal power. Personal power is a power derived from personal characteristics that are of value to the organization. Dito naman, nakadepende sa tao, sa isang tao, yung kind of power na meron. Kanina group eh, ito individual. There are different kinds of power here. First is the expert power, the ability to control another person's behavior through the possession of knowledge experience or judgment that the other person needs but does not have. Ito yung tinatawag nating mentor, mentorship na kokontrol ka niya kasi meron siyang characteristics or skills na wala ka. Therefore, siya yung nagtuturo sa'yo para mapasunod ka niya. You, you are controlled by one person or a group of person is controlled by one person because mataas yung kanyang kompetensi yung skills niya, yung knowledge niya. Yan. Another is the rational persuasion. In rational persuasion, the ability to control person's behavior by convincing the other person of a reasonable way of achieving it. Isa tong paraan para makontrol din ang tao 
na dapat gawin niya yung tama. At kapag ginawa niya yung tama, sino makikinabang? Yung leader kasi na-achieve din niya yung target niya. Yung first at first niya na-achieve is na-train niya yung tao, nagkaroon siya ng skill na maayos, ng katulad sa nagtuturo. At pangalawa, yung taong yon na-perform niya yung yung performance sa maayos, na maayos at na, maayos sa magkaroon ng product, therefore, sino magkikredit? Yung nagturo din. So, that's, yun yung mga ability na kaya ibigay ng power. We also have the referent power. It's the ability to control another's behavior because the person wants to identify with the power source. It can be enhanced by linking to morality and ethics and long-term vision. Dito naman, nakokontrol ang ugali ng tao sa pamagitan ng pinanggagalingan ng power. Example, uh, religious leader. Sa mga religious leader, example, pari, uh, pastors, napapasunod nila yung mga tao batay sa ini-introduce niyang attitudes and values. At yun ay sinusunod ng mga tao kasi sa tingin nila tama ang kanyang tinuturo. Again, that's referent power. Now, let's go to the different symbols of power. Marami tong symbols, not only the literal figures na nakikita ninyo sa screen natin, but we have the set of symbols of power. According to Cantor, Cantor's symbols of power, maraming characteristics ang power. And provided an ability to aid or assist another person. Ito yung una niya. Ability to intercede for someone in trouble. Kayang solusyonan ng power ang gusot ng isang tao. Next, number two. Ability to get placements for favored employees. Kayang gawa ng kapangyarihan ng power yung isang bagay na papabor sa isa pang tao. Di ba? Ang galing. Number three, exceeding budget limitations. Kayang gawin ng power na palawakin ang resources. Example, ang budget lang ay 1 million pesos for the issued books. Yun nga lang, para sa leader, kulang. So, may kakayanan siya, he or she has the power para pataasin yung budget for that. Sometimes, Maganda yon, Yung nga lang, may mga abusive leaders again. Leading to corruptions. Number four, procuring above average races employees. So, kaya niyang pataasin ang bila ng mga manggagawa niya o mga followers niya sa isang organization. Number five, getting items on the agenda at meetings. May kakayanan siya na kunin lahat ng importanteng details or information sa isang meeting lamang na, like for example, confidential or classified information na siya lang ang nakakakuha nito. Siya lang nakaka-access. Diba? Ang galing ng power. Next, access to recent information. Lahat ng latest, alam niya dapat. That's how the power contributes to the leader. Last one, having top managers seek out one's opinions. Nagagamit niya yung tao para malaman kung ano yung say or um, feedback sa kanya ng mga followers niya or nasa employees niya or nasa organization niya or mga taong sumusunod sa kanya. Another, according to Cantor, meron din tayong tinatawag na powerlessness or lack of power. Ito ay may iba't ibang symptoms in managers or leaders at various levels of the organization. According to Korda, yung kanina si Cantor, ngayon kay Korda, Korda symbols of power are easier to determine and they include office furnishing, time power, and standing by. So, tatlo yung ginamit ni Korda dyan. Kasi dito sa furnishing, pinapalish lahat. That's the power. The leader has the ability to furnish everything. Lahat ng gusot, lahat ng abiria, kayang gawa ng paraan ni leader. That's the power of the leader. Next, time. Kaya kontrolin ni leader yung oras. Kung kailan to ipapasa, kailan ang deadline, 
kailan magsisimula or time frame ng bawat act or projects sa isang lugar. Then another is the standing by. The leader can wait for the results. That's the power. Let the people following him or her na gumawa para sa kanya. Then wait for the results. And these are the ways to expand power. Siyempre, may mga leaders or pinuno ng bayan natin na gusto pang palawakin ang kanilang kapangyarihan. So, paano nga ba ito? Una, clearly define roles and responsibilities. Kailangan alam niya rin yung kanyang responsibilidad at ang kanyang mga gampanin. Example, you're the mayor of the city, therefore you're the father or the head of the city, dapat alam mo yung execution mo, kailang kagagawa ng batas, ano ang mga responsibilidad mo sa sa office, sa mamamayan, etc. Mahalaga yan. Parang sa classroom, ano ba ang role ni president, class president? Marami yan. Ano ang kanyang mga responsibilities? Importante yan. Next, provide opportunities for creative problem. Solving coupled with the discretion to act. Again, kung gusto mong mapalawak ang power mo, kailangan magaling ka mag-solve ng problem, ipakita mo na mahusay ka para pagkatiwalaan kanilang lahat. Number three, emphasize different ways of exercising influence. Dapat iba't ibang paraan. Do not stick with one method of influencing the other person or the other people. Kung yun ay nag-click sa isa, Then, try another method. Diba? Sometimes, yung ibang method na di-discover by means of different situations na kinakaharap nila. Number four, provide support to individuals so they become comfortable with developing their power. Of course, kailangan mo silang pagkatiwalaan. Bilang leader, dapat magtiwala ka para magtiwala sila sa'yo. Suportahan mo sila para suportahan ka nila. Last one, expand inducements for thinking and acting, not just by obeying. Kailangan bilang isang leader, mag-isip ka din at gumawa ka din. Yung acting na sinasabi dyan, actions. Kailangan gumawa, gumawa ka bilang isang leader, hindi yung susunod ka lang din. Diba? Kailangan mong ipakit sa kanila na dominant ka as a leader. You're the leader. Therefore, ikaw din yung masusunod. Pero kailangan mapapasunod mo sila by means of doing the same responsibility ng hindi ka nakakarga biyado ng iba. We have the two phases of power. According to McClelland, it can be in a right or wrong fashion. First is the personal power. It's used for personal gain. It can be resulting into win or lose approach. May mga bagay na ginagawa, ginagamit yung power para sa pansarili lamang ginagamit para umanga for promotions you are using other people to promote to be promoted kasi yung credit sa pinaghirapan nila napupunta sa iyo bilang isang leader example in the government tingin niyo po ba lahat ng mga nasa different agencies natin the different secretaries lahat ng efforts nila sino ba ang magki-credit nito of course the government of the philippines the leader of the Philippines, and that is our president. Sometimes, that's the win approach. May mga losing approach din tayo. Kapag pumalpak sila, the blame will be to you as the leader. Kasi ganun yun eh. Pag palpak sila, papalpak ka din, magkakamali sila, magkakamali ka rin. So, as a leader, you should also manage your people. Next, social control involves the use of power to create motivation, or accomplish group goal. Sa social control, kaya mong kontrolin yung grupo or team by using your power para ma-motivate sila. Sabi mo sa team mo, oh, we have a target. And this target, meron tayong reward. Doon pa lang, you're using your power. Example, may pa-contest, kailangan manalo tayo. So, what are the, what are the plans? So, hihingi mo mong opinion nila then put into one plan, then execute, manage, and perform with them. That's your role as a leader. Or therefore, nagkaroon ka ng social control sa kanila. 
that's one of one way to present your power to other people. Now, we have different tactics. Siyempre, bilang pinuno o magpa-practice ng power, kailangan meron kang technique na tinatawag. Ano, ano ba itong mga technique na to? First, consultation. Of course, know your people. Kailangan alamin mo sino sila. Unang-una yon. Sino sila? Anong kailangan nila? Characteristics nila? Mga hinaing nila? Learn to listen to your people. Next, Rational persuasion, di ba? Kailangan, ano ba ang kailangan? Ano yung mga problem na kinakaharap? Ask them. Mahalaga yan. Next, inspirational appeal. Kailangan pag nakita ka nila as leader, kahit nahihirapan sila, ang isipin nila, I can do this, I can perform my best because my boss or my leader is per also performing well. Or mas maganda yan, ipakita mo na yung ginagawa nila ay kaya mo ding gawin. Hindi ka lang utos ng utos. Be part of the team. That's power. Last one. Ingration. In this part, kailangan maging ma-involve ka talaga sa team nyo. That's one of the best tactic na may papakita natin bilang isang leader. Now, let's go with the types of authority. Kanina pag-usapan natin, power. Power comes with a great responsibility. Therefore, you should also have your great authority. We have the different kinds according to Weaver. Charismatic authority. Sa charismatic authority from the word itself, charisma, malakas ang dating. It is an influence possessed by person by virtue of their personal magnetism. Yung pang nagsalita sila, they can attract the people na makinig sa'yo, ang galing naman niya, ang husay naman niya. That's, that's charismatic authority. Sometimes, these are personal gifts na natural sa tao. Ayan, one example, si Donald Trump. Magaling siya magsalita, kaya niya nakuha yung madlang people na ipanalo siya sa kanyang kampanya during the elections. Diba, tinalo niya si Clinton, o diba? Napakahusay niya sa pagsasalita. That's charisma. Malakas ang dating. One example yan, sabihin natin si Mr. Willie Revillame. Diba? Sipin mo, ang lakas ang ting niya. Charisma. Pag lumalabas, napapasayaw niya yung mga tao. Nagagawa niya yung gusto niyang sabihin sa mga tao. Diba? That's charisma. Next, rational legal authority. This kind of authority, ang leadership niya nakabatay sa batas. Ang sinusunod niya ay yung nasa constitution. Mahalaga sa kanyan. As a leader, ang sinusunod niya ay ang mga tao. Or the execution ay nakabatay sa pag-accept ng kanyang position or ng power niya. One example, yung nasa picture natin. Next, number three. The traditional authority. Traditional. Always. This is the kind of leadership is based from the culture that is people often give allegiance to the one who occupy the institutional positions. Yung mga makalumang paraan or the old ways ay tuloy-tuloy pa rin na uh, ini-execute dahil yun ay nakasanayan, bahagi na ng kultura, at hindi na pwedeng baguhin. Medyo nire-reject niya yung term na modernism this time. One example po ay si President Duterte. Traditional authority ang kanyang ginagamit sa kanyang power kasi somehow may mga pagkakatulad siya kay pres kay former president Marcos, di ba po? Although hindi pa niya ina-adapt lahat pero meron siyang culture na katulad niya. Meron din siyang traditional type ng authority sa panahon ni President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo in terms ng pagpapalawid ng ekonomiya natin. That's traditional. Kasi ina-adapt lang nila, ina-adapt niya lang yung mga nakaraang administrasyon at minomodify ng bahagya. That's traditional authority. Also, the last part of our presentation is the coercive authority. Ito sa coercive authority, gumagamit ka ng force or pwersa para mapasunod ang mga tao or yung mga nasa ilalim mo or followers mo by means of police or 
military forces. Kapag nagkamali, parusa agad. Ako ang makapangirin, I'm the boss. I, I have the total control of all of this. So, pasok dito yung ideology regarding sa sa fascism, lalo na yung kanyang feature na totalitarianism, militarism, pasok yan sa coercive authority. Now, for our references, again, we have Tabahin and Pulma, Philippine Politics and Governance from Joben, Philippine Politics and Governance for Senior High School. Again, some newspapers and images from google.com. You can make a message to have a copy of our presentation at anodrymercado.gmail.com. You can also view this, this video in our Facebook page, I am Educado. And you can also like my YouTube channel, that's the link. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for listening for our third topic in Philippine politics and governance. Have a great day. Goodbye.